thank you so much akanksha for the kind introduction uh well firstly i would like to say how excited i am to be here with two of the most renowned names in the industry uh sindhu and pari uh good morning pari and uh, good evening to you sindhu good evening it's absolutely exciting to be here i was just sharing that with pari earlier on as well so <laughs> super excited great thanks for the invite and we're very excited about this chat looking forward to it great uh sounds great on that note uh let's dive straight into some of the questions we have lined up for you today um let's start up with you uh pari uh, since you've been part of the saas industry working with multiple partners in the ecosystem for quite some time now uh, could you share some insights on the rise of the saas business in india and how far we have come today yeah uh, the saas the startup saas ecosystem is the best kept secret of the indian startup ecosystem right you you hear about company like paytm ola and flipkart which are largely focused on indian consumers so people are able to use the product on a day to day basis they able to relate to that but during this period we also built a massive saas ecosystem we have over 1000 companies and if you look at it, the companies with over 100 million dollars revenue which is one company in 2015 today we have 8 to 10 companies which are over 100 million in annual recurring revenue um today over 15 of the unicorns from india are saas unicorns the first company which went ipo from the indian startup ecosystem in nasdaq is a saas company freshworks and and the interesting thing about saas is uh, it's been proven that you can sit in a tiny village in india where zo ceo is based and run a global saas company that's proven to you know uh, companies across the globe even customers that they can trust an indian product um and use it for their mission critical applications and our expectation is that currently the revenue of the overall saas ecosystem is about 8 billion we expect this number to accelerate to about 100 billion dollars by 2026 and the number of unicorns from india in the saas ecosystem will continue to grow in fact the number of years it takes to become a unicorn had reduced to you know, less than 6 to 7 years compared to it was the first unicorn was about 17 years and and our ecosystem also catching up much fast to other global ecosystems uh, india over to uk uh, last year and we quick we, we will expect to overtake china as well has to be the second largest saas ecosystem in the world next to the us the big difference um compared to uh, companies in china versus india china saas ecosystem is largely focused on china market versus the india saas ecosystem is building not just for the india market but really building for the global market and um it's very interesting that there are three key themes of company which are getting created one if you're building for global smbs it could be a company anywhere with two employees to 500 employees anywhere in the in the world because these companies are um uh, and you're in a saas company you can track every click of a customer so indian companies are able to understand the needs of small business anywhere in the world and the small business buys online so you don't have to have a strong sales team on the ground so the indian startups are able to sell and compete and win against any company even if you look at a company like zenoti selling to spas in the us so how do you understand the context of a us spa sitting in hyderabad and building for products so it's been a, 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 a you know it's an eye opener for uh, companies the second is building for developers more and more um, technology is now bought by developers directly rather than cios buying technology so because india is one of the largest global developer ecosystem the developers in india intrinsically understand what they like what their pain areas are so that's where you're able to build company like postman building for the global developer ecosystem and third is the large companies if you look at uh, indian large companies be it the tata group or sbi atel they are as big as fortune finder companies anywhere in the world they behave as global companies so we are building for large companies in india the same product is relevant 
for global large companies. So there's a lot of different trends which are coming together. And also the government being very supportive. If you look at even changes in policies, like um, in terms of long-term capital gain, um, even if you're investing in startup, you get very similar to a public company. Uh, you get three-year tax holiday. And the government have been very supportive of that. There's also lots of VC funding. You have funding coming, not just from um, traditional VCs, even Indian limited partners are now investing in SaaS uh, venture capital, which are unheard of before. So a lot of funding um, being available um, that is also helping on, again, the talent ecosystem. We have 3 million people who are uh, digitally uh, enabled in India, and that allows for the SaaS ecosystem uh, to have access to great talent to be able to build this, uh, build this uh, capability. So it's a convergence of all uh, different factors, even though we are going, it's called uh, winter coming, but uh, you know, from a SaaS perspective, you don't need a lot of investment like a B2C companies. So it is easier to get to profitability in a SaaS company compared to a B2C company. So that way we are still bullish, even though the next 18 months are going to be tough. We're bullish about the potential of the, uh, the SaaS ecosystem. We are keeping with our uh, projection for 2026, where the industry will get to about 100 billion. Great. Um, thank you for those insights, Pari. You're absolutely right. The India SaaS ecosystem is indeed uh, growing rapidly. And uh, that brings to my next question to Sindhu. Um, Sindhu, today SAP is building for uh, global from India and the SaaS sector. According to you, what factors have contributed to the success? And uh, if you can also give us a few examples of some of the startups uh, SAP has engaged with in the past. Absolutely, uh, Trilika. And it was super interesting to listen to Pari and also to Atit and Justin earlier on, right? And uh, again, uh, to reiterate a few of the things that, that we heard, right? And a couple of things which uh, clearly also reflect on the SAP uh, kind of a landscape uh, and why we are super excited about uh, what we are doing here. A um, couple of things, right? To that have led to these great success stories where we are building from India for the world, right? And both Ati, uh, as well as uh, Pari, you mentioned also the VC circle in India, the investments from VCs, right? Have played such a huge critical role in driving this whole SaaS market. Um, I mean, the numbers are just uh, phenomenal if you look at uh, the investment that has uh, happened over the last years. I think, Pari, you mentioned also about India being the largest empire, if you may will, of uh, digitally skilled workforce, right? And this is also something, if you look at global companies like ours, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt in our mind that we want to be part of this whole uh, ecosystem and tap into that tech talent, digitally skilled people. Pari talked about th close to 3 million digitally skilled people here, right? Which is huge compared to any other nation, right? Uh, what has also worked uh, very well, um, Tulika, is um, the kind of how uh, Indian SaaS market is 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 uh, approaching from a multi-product strategy. Uh, we talked about Zoho or Freshworks. Freshworks, I think, is a is a brilliant example of um, suite-based expansion of SMB software, right? And many such examples. And also, if you look at the efficient growth that's happening across the stages. I mean, many times we know, right, as, as businesses grow their revenue, many times efficiency tends to drop. But however, if you just look at the Indian SaaS uh, companies, they're running on an average at 80 to 100% of um, their sales efficiencies, right? Even when their businesses are, are scaling. Um, and many even at the rate, rate of 150% efficiency, right? Uh, Pari also mentioned um, big time the, the focus from the government, right? With having very pro startup policies from the government as well as the industry. I think the regulatory side, uh, sometimes which some of our, um, some of us like on the large corporate side face, that's not the case for uh, startups, there's income tax uh, exemption, right, for startups up to three years from incorporation. A um, lot of these things, right, also on the infrastructure side, not to forget, right, a lot of schemes offered to startups like move in office space, access to facilities, uh, and so on, right. Um, not to forget, I mean, this is also something that we have on our radar, right, as an R&D organization, um, startups do enjoy fast tracking of the whole patent application, which is again a huge 
huge piece of the equation, right? 80% rebate in filing of patents. So a lot of these aspects um, um, that, that contribute to the success story. Um, and I, if I just switch gears towards uh, from an SAP uh, perspective, what we're also seeing is multitude of factors along all these lines, but also founders staying very much committed to their product market fit, right? Along with that openness to collaborate with partners like us, with the partner economy. And I think this is also a very key element, which also Justin talked about earlier on, which are catalysts for success, right? Uh, and this is also reflected in our own startup studio as well. And the multitude of success stories that that we have had. I, I saw Anand, Anand on the call, right? So we'll talk about the scaling journey of um, of Skillate, which is a HR tech uh, SaaS uh, startup, which was founded by Anand and two other young founders back in 2017. Uh, and today, again, right, they're talking about 100 plus logos across various industries. And here, if you just look distinctly to Lika, what stands out is also the very firm commitment from the founding team to also collaborate, to co-innovate, and also scale with SAP, right? That's the win-win uh, that that we that we talk about, and today they are one of the most trusted partners uh, for SAP Success Factors, which is our portfolio in the human experience management space that goes across processes like total workforce management, or in very simple terms, hire to retire, right? And they are trusted partners in the APJ region, right? With multiple joint customer wins that I'm sure uh, we'll also hear about uh, later on. Another interesting story is. Um, the monumental growth that we have seen from Moklix, which is again a startup from our batch back in uh, 2016, uh, and Unicorn in the B2B e-commerce domain, right? Uh, and Moklix progressed from uh, the startup studio. They went into our partner uh, Edge Build program, and uh, they were also one of the winners back then of the ACE Awards, which is our platform to recognize exemplary co-innovation engagements uh, with SAP, which are driven by uh, partner startups, ISVs, and so on. So again, a multiple such stories of hyper growth startups with whom we are collaborating through a very focused co-innovation led uh, go-to-market model. And, and the beauty for our startups who come here and work with us is also the access to our product experts, right? And uh, I always say that um, we are the only hub of SAP where we have the entire breadth of our product portfolio in, in one place, right? Be it customer experience, be it human experience management, be it in the whole uh, network or spend management, sourcing, procurement, um, the business technology platform, right? And that's that's massive. So um, yeah, we're very excited as you can see also about the startups who will be onboarding this year. So September, end of September, we are starting our new cohort. So super excited about that as well. Well, thank you so much, Sindhu. And uh, as you rightly mentioned, people and policies are the bedrock for success. And uh, I'm sure these success stories will inspire the next set of SaaS founders. Uh, amazing. Uh, so, Pari, um, as we all know that Zanov is closely working with the entire ecosystem across India, uh, can you share a few best practices in the SaaS industry for startups who are present here today? Sure. Um, the the first uh, is building a company is very very hard, right? If you build a company which is going to have a, a million dollar revenue or a company which is a billion dollar revenue, it is very hard. So if you're a founder of a SaaS company, it got to spend a lot of time to pick a market which is large enough. It's easier, um, you know, you can build a company which is still very hard as a a lifestyle company, which could be one or $2 million revenue in a very small space. Or you pick a very large space where you could potentially build a company like SAP. Right? So picking the right market with very large addressable market, it's going to be the number one uh, focus. The second is uh, the founder should focus on things um, it differentiates them. If you're a second time founder, right? You've done a company, you've done a successful exit, you were starting another company, VCs will fund your company just off your previous credibility. But if you've not done a company before, uh, for investors to trust, one, you've got to have a strong uh, minimum viable product. And second, why is that founding team uniquely positioned 
to win in that particular area. So that becomes a clear, you know, which area you select where you have a right to win in that particular area. So that's the second key area. Third is how do you differentiate a SaaS company from India from a, a global company? The big difference we have is um, to be able to sell remote, it's it's a level, it's an equalizer, right? If you can sell, if you're a company based out of Bay Area and you are selling to a customer in, in Midwest in Chicago, you would still, the customer in Chicago is going to buy online and they're going to buy from somebody in Bangalore or Delhi, they're going to buy online. So how do you now create a very strong uh, sales and marketing operations and excel in that? If you look at a company like Chargebee, Freshworks, Zoho, all of them excel in their sales and marketing operations from India, which allows customers to use freemium model to use a product and then start paying for the product. So focusing on go-to-market, focusing on operation, sales operations early on is very, very important. Fourth is when you're building enterprise software, um, your top customers try to influence what they want, right? So one, you have a roadmap, but a customer will come and say, I want this particular feature. Then every customer will start to ask for that. And then the hiring is easier because we have a large market in India. Companies tend to start doing services early on. If you start to do services early on, uh, it becomes very difficult to pivot back into a product company. So to uh, learn to say no to customer requests and ensure that you're building a very disciplined product roadmap, which takes into consideration what is important for a set of large set of your customers, rather than deciding what is important for one or two of your large customers. That discipline is critical, even though that might mean that you could lose some revenue from your top customers, but long-term it allows you to build something um, for, of, um, which is useful for a lot of customers. And finally, uh, the fact that you are in India, it's important to take advantage of the ecosystem which is available in India. Like Sindhu mentioned, SAP probably is a hotbed of global enterprise domain knowledge in India. Looking at every function, be it finance, procurement, HR, um, marketing, or vertical capability around banking, retail, there is probably no other one location where that deep expertise along with technical expertise exists. So how do you now use that type of institutions in the ecosystem that will accelerate your learning? In, um, and so you don't have to go and make trips uh, and, and observe and talk to customers in the U.S. to understand, but you have the right mentors and partners locally. They could provide you the same level of insights. Uh, that's important. Then also building on top of platforms. More and more companies are starting to build on uh, the hyperscalers and platform they trust. And they buy SaaS company, SaaS solutions, which are built on top of because of data security, regulation, compliance. And as companies, large companies are global, they want to work with trusted partners. So if you're building on top of these platforms, be it SAP and other platforms, that ensures the customer by default trust your product. And, and the basic infrastructure required for your product to be relevant, ready for large companies, is taken care of. So that becomes very important rather than trying to build everything native and building the trust and credibility with large companies becomes very, very hard. So these are some of the best practices uh, we believe is important for SaaS companies to follow. Uh, thanks, Pari. Those were some great points. I'm keeping notes and uh, I hope that the startups present here today are keeping notes of these points too. Um, great. Uh, moving on. Uh, so, Sindhu, uh, since SAP has collaborated with startups in the past, uh, what, according to you, are some of the benefits for large enterprises uh, when collaborating with high potential startups? Yeah, I, I, I would build on a few of the things which Pari uh, talked about uh, from the other side, right? And I think there are three, uh, in my mind, at least three kind of areas, if I were to cluster them. Um, Pari talked about building a partner, the, the whole ecosystem, right? And for us, that's that's front and center, building a very vibrant 
partner economy because uh, uh, at SAP, I mean, um, and for many of you who are on the call, you know that we have a very strong focus on creating a very vibrant next-gen partner economy. And again, with a very strong focus on around startups and also digital natives, right? And for us, um, the startup studio or various partner engagement constructs that we have as part of our global partner organization is really around helping startups and digital natives to gather uh, enablement uh, on t SAP's technologies. Pari talked about building on platforms. Uh, and this is where, uh, specifically to our SAP business technology platform, right, which is our uh, uh, business platform for, uh, if you're looking at extension capabilities, integration capabilities, native building on the platform where you leverage um, the underlying business services from the platforms, underlying um, core services from the platforms, be it AI, ML, all set of microservices that we bring out there, right? And all the underlying stack and all the capabilities around um, uh, security, resilience, everything is taken care of. Uh, but in this due course of enablement, uh, it's, it's really about creating that strong community of adopters, multipliers, enablers, right? Which is key for us when we talk about creating those communities of practice, right? And also um, evangelizing our technology even further into the developer ecosystem. The second piece, Tulika, is, is I think, which we've been also talking about, right? It's the co-creation. Um, it's the co-innovation, right? Which is super important when you talk about uh, future proofing and creating that value for end users, right? And uh, that is absolutely at the core of uh, what we do, right? And we can, like I said, right? We can bring the best of both worlds, be it from SAP, from the startups, to ensure that we are resolving those very key pain points where big parts of it may be covered in our portfolio, but there's niche areas, right, where you come in with a very specific focused um, uh, capability that totally complements what we have to offer and, uh, and uh, uh, with that also address that very specific customer or end user need or even a larger large scale problem in the market and because we all know right that time to value is of absolute essence for our customers and many times for us it's really that co-innovation approaches that help us create that um, absolute customer delight right so very quickly uh, addressing that very key pain, pain point and if I come back to the workforce here, right, we are a 12,000 strong family here of engineers. And for us, it's also very, very important to build that entrepreneurial mindset, right, that spirit um, and, and really have that rise of entrepreneurs from within the organization as well. And that entrepreneurial mindset is for us super important, right? Uh, as we go through this transformation also internally at SAP. So this collaboration with startups brings that kind of aura amongst our developer community, right? And I'm aware of so many of our entrepreneurs uh, from here at, at Labs India, where they are collaborating deeply with our uh, founder alumni from the startup studio uh, to also scale their ideas into MVPs, into ventures, uh, that can enable the right to win for SAP, right? And uh, so for us, it's really about all these factors that come together. Also, I've, uh, to, to back up that that last point, what I made, right? We, we also have an internal uh, kind of a startup school initiative, which is part of our annual innovation and venture challenge. Uh, many of you have heard of Invent probably, where we're also exposing our innovators to interact and engage with startup founders. So, because we also want our, uh, teams to run their parts of the portfolio like they would run their own startup, right? And so that that kind of core mindset is also very important. So it's really these three clusters, if I just uh, bring it all together, Tulika. Uh, that was very well captured, Sindhu. And uh, of course, these benefits strengthen our commitment towards, you know, driving impactful collaboration in the ecosystem. Um, uh, great. Now, uh, that brings us to the last question for the day. Uh, that is to the both of you, Pari and Sindhu. Uh, we would love to know your thoughts on the collaboration between Zinov and SAP to build SAS Club. Uh, Pari, we can we can start off with you. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's, uh, first of all, we're super excited to build this uh, club. Uh, it's an honor to work with SAP, uh, a leader in enterprise software, to 
build a SAP, uh, SaaS club in India. Now, at Zeno, we bring um, a strong capability to build communities and strong research and deep understanding of the startup ecosystem in India. And an and ability to aggregate best practices on what we observe in the industry. So that's the idea we bring in. And I think it complements really well um, the SAP's focus on domain, technology, um, capability, as well as uh, Sindhu talked about entrepreneurship. And SAP is one of the great examples of uh, a great entrepreneur building a several billion dollar company and truly building a global company. So that's an inspiration as well for, uh, for startups. And, and the most important thing is uh, the leadership coming from SAP. Uh, Sindhu being here um, and launching this is a great, a great uh, showcase the great commitment uh, SAP has on the program. So we are very excited to partner with SAP and make this uh, a club which, which will really help founders to learn from each other learn from SAP and co-create and co-innovate and, uh, and win in the global market, both for SAP as well as for the startups. Great. Uh, thank you, Pari. Uh, Sindhu, uh, would you like to add in your thoughts? I think Pari said it beautifully, uh, Tulika. Uh, if I just were to add two more sentences, right? Uh, for us, um, we, we found the perfect partner in Zeno, right? So thank you, Pari, for your leadership and and uh, your support in being here today with us and for us i mean it's this is a very humble effort right to drive focused conversations that mentoring that we talked about that enterprise connects the co-innovation because we truly believe that we have to drive this uh, thriving enterprise saas ecosystem in india and like i said with the perfect partner in zinov who's bringing that market intelligence right and fully understands the pulse of this ecosystem the deep connects that you have into the ecosystem and combined with the, the technology and the product portfolio from SAP, I think we are absolutely uh, set up uh, to really um, enable our SaaS startups and scale together, right? Uh, so that's, uh, you can see that we are fully committed and uh, very much excited about this uh, joint uh, launch today. Great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pari and Sindhu, for your time. It was indeed an interesting conversation on how rapidly the industry is growing. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, we're here at the right time with the SAS Club initiative, which will only strengthen it further. Um, great. On that note, uh, Sindhu, would you please do the honors of unveiling the digital platform for SAS Club? Yeah, happy to launch this dedicated space. So this is our digital space for the SAS Club. And uh this will be our platform for the, the larger community to share their knowledge and also get the latest updates on all the upcoming activities, uh, all the collaboration opportunities with all the different stakeholders. Uh, and um, also in the coming weeks, we are very confident that this digital space will also play a very significant role um, in also identifying those key opportunities, connecting the right stakeholders, right? Uh, for many um, collaborations that we will see in the future. And, and this all hand in hand together with our partnership uh, with Zinov. So very excited to be launching this digital space as well. Well, thank you so much, Sindhu. And thank you again, Pari. It was great having a conversation with you today. Uh, for the audience here, we do have another uh, track, an interesting panel discussion coming up next. And uh, I will hand it over to Akamsha for the next segment. Thank you so much. Thanks, Silika. Thanks, Thank Sindhu. Thank you. Thank you.